Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 889 of the Juice Box Podcast. On today's episode, Jenny and I will be adding to the Type 2 Diabetes Pro Tip series, and we'll be speaking today about getting moving. There are easy ways to get yourself going again. Jenny and I are going to talk about just a few of them and why they are so important. While you're listening today, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan. And I have a couple things here for you just for Juice Box podcast listeners. If you want to try AG1, that green drink from Athletic Greens, I actually drink it every day, you can. And if you use my link, athleticgreens.com forward slash juice box, you will get a free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first order. Now, if you're looking for joggers, sweatshirts, sheets, towels, pajamas, that kind of stuff, you can go to cozyearth.com. And when you use the offer code juice box at checkout, you will save 35% off your entire order. Cozyearth.com. Use juice box at checkout. Friends, my daughter has been using the Contour Next One blood glucose meter for some years now, and it is my personal favorite meter. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Why is it my favorite meter? It is easy to carry, to hold, has a bright light for nighttime viewing, and features second chance test strips. On top of all that, it's incredibly accurate. And isn't that the most important part? It is. But let me tell you about those second chance test strips. Say you uh, you get some blood out and you touch the strip to it, but it's not quite enough. Now, this is not to say that the strip requires a lot of blood because the sample really does not need to be very large at all. But for some reason, like you touch a little and I don't know, you, you sneeze. Now you have to go back and get more. Well, with most meters, you'd have to throw away that expensive strip and go again, but not with the Contour Next One. With the Contour Next One, you just get a little more blood, touch that strip back to it, and you get the same accurate result as you would have if you got all the blood the first time. Second chance test strip. On top of all this, if you go to my link, contournext.com forward slash juice box, you'll see a big yellow button that says buy now. You can actually get your supplies online often for cheaper than it costs you through your insurance. You can buy a meter at Amazon, Walmart.com, Walgreens, CVS, Meyer, Kroger, Target, Rite Aid, all at my link. Check it out, won't you? Contournext.com forward slash juice box. This is a great website. It has a ton of information about a ton of their products. I'm here to tell you about the Contour Next One, but the website will tell you much more. I am not kidding. I am not gilding the lily. I am not making this up. The Contour Next One is hands down the best meter I've ever used, and it could be cheaper in cash then you're paying right now through your insurance. You owe it to yourself to check it out. There are links to Contour and all the sponsors in the show notes of the podcast or audio player you're listening in right now. And there are links at juiceboxpodcast.com. If you can't remember, contournext.com forward slash juicebox. The podcast is sponsored today by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and is 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. BetterHelp.com forward slash juice box. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. And when you use my link, you'll save 10% on your first month of therapy. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. Talk to them however you feel comfortable, text, chat, phone, or video call. If your therapist isn't the right fit, for any reason at all, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. And the best part for me is that with BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you. And you're going to get more scheduling flexibility and a more affordable price. I myself have just begun using BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com forward slash juice box. That's better 
help, H-E-L-P dot com forward slash juice box. Save 10% on your first month of therapy. I was going to say before, um, with your use of the Wagovi, um, and as we've like texted about some things too, you have taken it to a degree to the route that really should be along with anything that's supposed to impact health and weight and all that. Like you're not just sitting back eating a bag of Doritos expecting that no. this is going to be the magic trick, yeah. right? No, not at all. Um, you know, you're really, you're conscious, you're being more aware than maybe you were before. You're making sure that you're eating. You're not not eating because this med can take away appetite or reduce or increase satiety, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're, I was just going to, I meant to say that that's a good thing that Thank you're you. doing. Well, good I, lifestyle thing. I appreciate that. Actually, I started recording right before you said that, and I'm going to keep talking, and I might keep awesome. this, and I might keep this in. Um, I took my own advice. That's basically what I did. I was like, I I looked at myself and I thought, what would I tell other people to do? I'm going to do that, and yes. um, and that's that's what I've done. So I, and and the medication, like the the specter of the medication when the doctor gives it to you. It kind of helps you because they're like, look, if you eat the wrong things, you could end up with like some horrible nausea and like, I don't want that. So, right. you know, but then their doctor's like, but in this first injection, if we go over, you probably won't experience that. I'm like, well, I'm going to start eating that way now mm -hmm. just to get myself ready. Like, cause I don't, I don't want to be in a panic situation where I'm like, I don't know, tossing candies back and this medication <laughs> gets ramped up and I'm like, oh, plus, right. I, plus if there was any value to just wait, I wanted the weight loss value. Yes. And so the one thing I can for sure say is that I don't, there's no hunger on this at all. Like the first four days I was getting hunger in my head. Like I was getting woozy. Right. Like shouldn't I, I should be eating something, but your stomach wasn't telling it to you. It was more your brain recognizing that your body was giving you some signals of lack of enough intake but you really weren't like physically hung. Well, that's not the right way to say it. It's not like you got this signal from a rumbly belly, let's say. Oh, my God. Right? Yeah. No, it's bizarre because the only way I knew I was the only way I knew I was hungry is that I, I was like, am I going to like like pass out? Like, why am I weak and dizzy? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like, like oh, I haven't eaten anything. <laughs> and then you think, oh, goodness. And so um, for the first couple of days, I just put timers on my phone. And mm -hmm. I was like, eat here, eat here. Um, yes. Because I, I, I didn't know what else to do. I'm back. I have a better flow now. And after I've been on it for a few days, I, I am, I have a little bit of, it's not hunger the way you would think of it, but it's not like a mass, like hypnosis, like it was the first time when it, when it first sure. hit me. I don't know what's going to happen when I ramp up to a new, um, a Dose. new dosage. But for now, yeah, I took my own advice. I'm eating uh, carefully, cleaner. When I'm, if I have a sweet tooth, I go to fruit, um, yeah. you know, like little stuff like that. I'm eating a lot of like chicken and turkey and like some lean beef and stuff. So. I'm very proud of you. Thank that's you super much. awesome. Honestly. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, well, and I think, I mean, that's right around, along with like lifestyle things, right? I mean, lifestyle, including while a medication might help lifestyle in many health conditions, is a piece that needs to be included. If the med is really going to help you the way it's supposed to. I also wasn't going to waste the opportunity. Like, right. I just thought, like, it's not going to happen again. When am I going to go back to a doctor six months ago? I'm really ready this time. You, you, you know, like, right. so I'm just like, I'm going to go for it here. And, you know, and actually making this series, if I'm being honest, has helped me too. Because, you know, telling people this is how you could help yourself, it would be pretty hypocritical if I didn't do the same thing. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I will say for the recording that I have eaten like this in the past and not experienced weight loss like this. So right. I'm, this stuff's got to be doing something. I am going to go. I'm going to get a, a Gila monster to spit on me. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Good if you're listening that. and you don't get that, you got to go back and listen to the episode before this. But today, <laughs> today we're going to talk about something that I think a lot of people need help with and I'm going to be a, a great person to talk to you with about it because I, I easily could be asking these questions. So cool. How do I start to exercise 
when I'm not a person who's exercised because I don't want to get hurt and I don't want to, I don't want to like break down right away. I think that's got to be the biggest goal, right? The focus in the beginning. I do. And if you, I think the majority of people that are listening are also listening because they're ready for a change. And I think that's a step to any lifestyle change inclusive of adding activity is you have to have this this motivation of something needs to give here, mm. right? I've got to put some some in, some effort in. Does that mean, oh gosh, I want to start exercising, so I'm going to buy the new shoes, I'm going to head out the door, and I'm going to go run 20 miles because that's clearly what I have to start to do. <laughs> that's You're going to come back and not want to do anything anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, right. And yeah, you don't want to be, like you want to, I, I always say to people around me when they're starting up, like, don't just go like, ah, like light your hair on fire and run forward because you'll burn out too quickly and you'll get sore right. and then you'll skip and then you'll go right back into old things. I, I, I Listen, this is old timey thinking, but I remember being 10, 11 years old and my aunt and my cousin saying that they wanted to lose weight and they just mm -hmm. started walking after dinner. Yeah, it was literally all they did. It was one summer they started walking after dinner. I was stunned, even as a child, at how much weight they lost doing that. Yeah. Yes, so. there are some some really good studies um, that have been done over a number of years for people, elderly people now who are you know in their like like ninety year old mm. people who have had longevity, obviously, and health during that long life. And what are some of the biggest takeaways? These are people who they may not have been marathon runners or crazy swimmers, or they played tennis like a fiend every week. These were people that walked. Yeah, Walking was the most common thing for these people who were interviewed to have included long-term. Mm. And if you're going to start with any kind of even the word exercise, I think, to some people is a turnoff. If you think about it by of just increasing movement in your day, yeah. right? Um, you might, I mean, most people have heard, park the car farther away. That's something you can do. And if the three trips to whatever store or grocer that you're going to a week means that you're parking way in the back of the lot and you're walking farther in, and you're not having somebody help you all the way out and cart your groceries, you are increasing your movement. Right. It may not sound like exercise, but you're changing and you're creating a new habit to include more steps than you were likely getting, right? I, yes. I, I laughed uh, to myself because I do that because I don't trust people near my car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, sounds like my husband. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, these sons of bitches. And, uh, right. <laughs> <you know? laughs> <laughs> it's windy. They're not paying attention. Right. Don't park next to the car that has car seats. Don't write. Like. Well, Jenny, I will only park if one side is on a curb. Uh, if there's a hill, I'll only park on the top side of it. I have a lot of rules about not. I can't. <laughs> if I see a little ding in my car, it ruins it for me. Anyway, so <laughs> I do that. And I also um, take my cart back, too. Yes. Like, just until so you get a little extra. And it is. It is helpful. Right. I mean, it's right. more walking than I get otherwise on a day I'm working. And if you're, you know, if you're somebody who lives in one of the, like, let's say a bigger city that might have some more public transport, whether it's a subway, a metro, a, a bus or whatnot, um, let's say you take your car and you park in a lot and you get on a bus, park your car way to the back and walk farther in to where you get on. If you're standing and waiting for your subway, you could be marching in place. I guarantee nobody's going to care, yeah. honestly. If you live someplace that there's a subway that most people take for public transportation, I promise nobody's going to look at you sideways if you're walking in place. Or walk up and down. Don't just stand there looking at your phone. Mm -hmm. Sorry, calling out people, right? Yeah. Um, it's the thing that people do. But you could be getting in more steps yeah. by just walking back and forth waiting, right? Um, going up and down on an escalator instead of standing. Walk on the left, stand on the right. Be the walker on the left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I um, will have an episode coming out a few weeks after this one uh, goes up. And it's with this person. We were just talking through ways uh, 
that people can like lower their glucose values. Not and it wasn't about people with diabetes. This person who comes on as a guest, she's talking about just everyday average people. And um, I thought, oh, I'll have her on and see how what she's talking about might relate back to people with diabetes. And um, she was talking about calf raises and how working your calves, like just sitting in your seat, like lifting your heels and bending. She's like, that could actually lower your blood glucose. And I was like, huh. And I I forget her whole explanation. I'll have to find it. Um, Yeah. But yeah. But there are whole bunches of things like that. Even um, if you have a desk, get and you have the opportunity within wherever you work Get a standing desk, one that you can raise up and down. Stand part of your day versus sitting. Mm -hmm. You actually burn more calories standing than you do sitting all day long, even if you're just standing in one position. Uh, If you have, you know, an underneath of a desk that allows enough space for one of those, it's it's like a tiny little pedaling. Like I can't remember what they're called, right? But you could be getting in some movement by doing that, and you're building it into your day where you're already continuing to do then what you need to do Mm -hmm. but you're adding it in which is extra um you know if you got kids go walk to the bus stop and go and pick them up there and back Uh, these are just it's not what we would call exercise session like 30 minutes at the gym with the trainer right yeah but this may be adding more than what you were doing and it could start to add up you know a pet a Desk pedal is what I guess they call it, or portable under desk pedal. There you pedal. go. You can get them for as low as like $35. Yes. So you all have Amazon. It could be at your house tomorrow. And you don't <laughs> and you don't need the one that's like 200 bucks. So they, they that's a great I mean, that's just that's what we're, that's what I'm talking about here. Because getting started has got to be the most difficult part. Like, yes. I mean, just honestly, with this whole series, I keep thinking that, you know, whether it's going to the doctor, asking, speaking up, getting a blood test, like the getting started part is, is just always kind of the biggest leap. And, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm excited to talk about it. Another one is if you do have some of even news, if you watch the news every single night, or you always sit down to a favorite program um, that you've recorded, and now you're going to catch up on it. Either during the commercial breaks, get up, move around, maybe get some simple five-pound hand weights, lift them up and down while you're sitting on the couch or your 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 favorite chair, or stand up during the commercials. Again, walk in place, do some squats. Squats, kind of like the leg raises, are they're a great way to drop your blood sugar. Yeah. Honestly, that crazy. So they can these uh, they could all be added in again in as examples to your day-to-day normal stuff that you're trying to get done without creating too much change in your, I guess, what you're trying to do. Yeah. I I also think that it can be scary. Like the idea of like, well, you have to start exercising. I imagine people think about, oh, I got to get a gym membership. I got to go to the gym. They're going to be people there who are in better shape than me. I'm going to be embarrassed. I don't want to do that. I don't know how to do it. Or it's a cost. Yeah. It's a a cost. I don't know how to Mm -hmm. do the exercises. Like, I don't think you have to start with that. Even just like- Little tiny five pound dumbbells that you could, I'm sure, grab anywhere. You could probably, probably things in your house you could use just to just do some like easy curls to like help the muscle tone come back and other ways to burn calories, you know? Yes. Um, And just make yourself stronger overall, like your whole body. Like it doesn't have to start with, uh, you know, military style push ups and. (laughs) Not at all. And today, you know, in today's world, even something like a gym membership doesn't, it's not necessary because we have so many tools that are free. YouTube is full of stuff that you can get started with. So again, as you mentioned, if you're, if you are worried about how you might look or that you don't have the right clothes to wear or whatever it might be, or that the gym membership is just, it's too pricey. It doesn't fit into your budget. Online, there are a number of things. You close the windows in your house, nobody has to see you. You can do it at two o'clock in the morning if that's what your schedule, per, you know, permits. There's yeah. a, um, there's a wonderful. It's it's walk down your blood sugar. It's by Leslie Sansone. Okay. She does. She does fantastic. All of the people actually 
in um, her online videos have diabetes, most of them with type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. And she has anywhere from 15 minute walks all the way to 45 minute walks going a mile all the way up to three miles. And she's, she's funny and she's fun to listen to. Um, so that's one that I, I used to recommend a lot actually, when I was working with the, um, the education that classes sounds I nice used to teach. Would, wouldn't we want people to listen to the podcast while they're working though? No, no. My, I mean, my podcast, this one. I, once wow. in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted, I want to say something kind of like odd that I makes your point. I don't know how many people know Joel Embiid. He's a basketball player for the Sixers. And mm-hmm. I read an interview with him recently and they asked like, cause he lived in Cameroon. He, he I don't think he came here till he was 16. He wasn't a, like a basketball player. And they asked him how he learned to play. And he said, uh, YouTube, he learned to shoot on YouTube. He said, on YouTube. he said, I went to YouTube, I watched a bunch of videos, and I went to the gym and practiced. So I don't know what isn't on YouTube at this point. Uh, you know, Correct. You know, go find right. something that will help. And um, stretching, too, right? Like, I, I wanted to bring this mm-hmm. up. Like, just getting your body stretched out is such a big deal. Um, yes. And again, I think you can you can go to YouTube for that as well. Absolutely. There's yeah. even some really good flexibility yoga there are a number of different people who have really good free programs. Some of them are even like 30 day and you can start them and each day kind of builds on itself. Um, and they're short enough to fit into a schedule that may not permit a lot of time. Um, so yes, there, yeah. I don't, I don't think there's anything you can't find on YouTube. Right. These days. And there's no shortage of people on social media who are sharing their journey as well and, and throwing a camera in front of themselves and saying, look, this right. is where I started and here's how I've been going. Um, mm-hmm. Whatever you need for motivation, but the, the movement itself. So how much, how much actual movement do I want to start with? Is it a certain amount of day? Is it a certain amount of week? How do I count it? Certain amount of minutes, about 150 minutes a week okay. is the goal, and that's a little bit more maintenance, right? Mm-hmm. If you're really looking for your activity increase or your addition of activity that wasn't there to benefit loss, we're looking at around like 200 plus minutes a week, kind of give or take. And the average recommendation is about 30 minutes of exercise a day, right? Or okay. five days a week. So- and and should it be spread out? Like, I don't want to, like, get up one day and try to put two hours in or something like that, right? Correct. And, it, and I think that's an important point to make when we're talking specifically in the realm of people who have diabetes. The more regular your activity is, especially around medication use, the more likely it is you're going to have a sort of an overlapping effect on a day-to-day basis if you get consistent. Every morning I get up, I take a 20 minute walk. Great. That rolls into the next 24 hours and that day rolls into the next day. So we really do want regularity and not just saving it all up and saying Saturday morning, that's when I'm going to get this 150 minutes in. Will type two see the same benefit that type one see from consistent? Okay. Not Jenny's not. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, muscles, muscles that build And you build muscles by exercise, multiple different kinds, right? Cardio, as well as your weight bearing, flexibility, those muscle cells are what respond to insulin and allow then the glucose to be shifted into the places that it's supposed to. So exercise is, it's like free insulin, essentially. Mm -hmm. It primes those receptors on your cells to open up because when you move your muscles, they need energy. Where is the energy going to come from? It's going to come from the glucose levels in your body, right? Or some of it. And so then that decreases your blood sugar levels, which is great. Yeah. So I'm going to ask a question I might not be right about. Um, With a type 2, it's not that they're not making insulin. Their body's not using it correctly. And doctors are going to call that insulin resistance. Does exercise help with that? Or Exercise helps. Yes, absolutely. That's a big reason for adding exercise is... 
decreasing the amount of resistance that's in the picture. Yes. Mm. So the exercise works exactly the way it does in type ones and type twos. Like exercise helps your insulin be more productive. You'll need less Correct. of it, I see. Yes. Uh, uh, my daughter who has type one uh, is at college and she had, she's decided to start driving to class. And I thought, oh, I wonder if she's going to need more insulin. Like that's because mm. like, she because she was walking, getting on a bus, getting off the bus, and humping her ass one way and the other, and then all of a sudden she wasn't, <laughs> and then she got, and then you know the the new semester started up. It's a quarter. The new quarter started up, and she got um, it's a lot of desk work again. Oh, so so this week she's like, I'm using so much insulin this week, and I was like, Yeah, like you're driving to school, and you're sitting at your desk, and mm-hmm. still eating that horrible college food. We have one more quarter to go. Um, Arden requested. Um, a pl- she used her accommodation. So I know this isn't for type twos so much, but oh. she used an accommodation to ask for a dorm room that had a kitchen in it because she's like, I'm, I have to start cooking for myself. I have to stop eating this food. Good for her. Yeah. So it was really, really kind of cool. Um, but anyway, they got to move. Um, do you remember what was it? The big blue test? Remember? Yes, in, in- absolutely. That was where during November, Diabetes Awareness Month, the big blue test was check your blood sugar, get up and move f- 15 minutes, right? So. 10 or 15 minutes, I think it was. And then check your blood sugar again and yeah. post it was really the idea of getting people to see that movement, even if you've got only 10 or 15 minutes, really did have a very quick impact on blood sugar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I just remember that as something that that had to be 15 years ago in the type one community, right? A long time ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm going to say again, I, I'm all for one of you listening to like jump on social media and share improvements with your type two diabetes, the way people share improvements with their weight, the way people share improvements with all kinds of other things, exercise improvement, like just show people, Hey, I did this today in my A1C. You know, especially if you have a CGM, you'll you'll be able to go into the the Clarity app if you have a Dexcom yeah. and say, "Look, my my A one C estimated last week was this, and this week it's it looks lower." And you know, try to be. I mean, if you need that to motivate yourself, great. If you think you can help somebody else, it's terrific as well. Right. Yeah. And you know, I think the other thing in the realm of adding activity is. People stay motivated when they've got somebody else that is working with them to their goal, right? So if you're somebody who says, I've got this 30 minutes after I finish work and I want to get out and exercise, maybe there's a friend that will walk with you, right? Because now you're also tying in a scheduling, which makes it more, it makes it more like an appointment that you've made. Yeah. And you don't want to let your friend down because you've made this appointment. So you guys, you keep your each other sort of on track with this plan of action. Yeah. And it's kind of nice. That's a great idea. It really, it really is like a gym buddy, but a walking buddy or, yes, or something. Exactly. Like right. Or a pickle buddy. I mean, I don't know how many people have like we've got a park right across the street with tennis courts. And last summer they actually, because so many people were playing pickle or pickleball or pickleball. whatever it's called, yeah. right? Um, they drew the the court for the pickleball lines right all on the tennis courts. People were doing that. Uh, because people were playing it anyway, right? So you know, maybe somebody has said to you, hey, you know, come play pickleball with me or whatever and add that in. That's a fun form of exercise. Right. I think back to when I was in my early 20s, I was working with this bunch of guys and they were playing, I forget what they called it, but it was a, it was a game you played with a ball, but it was in a racquetball court and there was a net and some people on either side and we would get together and do it like once a week. And that was probably the best time of my life as far as being in shape. And I didn't even think of it that way. I was just moving more. It's just fun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was yeah. fun. And like it, it, and it wasn't difficult either. Meaning it was after work. I used to have a a terrible job. So I worked very hard all day. Like we were beat up at the end of the day and we still all showed up and did it. You know, and, and it was probably a, that type of activity. You bring in a good point. Maybe there's an activity that you can get into that is a, it's a release of everything that you've put into your day that's not been the greatest or that has been really difficult. Um, so maybe you can find an activity that's just like a, maybe you go and you box. 
Oh, or you maybe know, you take a kickboxing like something or another, right? I visited my son recently, and he just, you know, in the last year, graduated from college and stopped playing baseball. And he um, just one day he said to me, he's like, uh, I can't talk. I'm going to go play basketball. And I was like, where he goes, I'm going to the park. There's got to be a game there. Right. And he's in a city by himself right now. And he's like, I cannot sit still like this. But it, he's got the mind of an athlete. Like, like I can't just sit here. And so right. he went to play basketball. And he's like, oh, I've met some guys. Like, we're playing now. This is terrific. And then he said to me, I might try to find a boxing gym even. Like, he's like, that looks like good exercise. And it's, yeah. it's just interesting the difference between – and I made this point in another episode, and I hope people are tying this all together. We all drag our five, six-year-olds to some sport, and they're all able to do it. And some kids keep doing it, and they're not all, like, don't get me wrong, right? They're not all, like, pros, but right. they can get up, and they can go, and they can do it, and they're they're healthy, and they're moving. And then some people make a decision to stop moving, and some people make a decision to keep moving, Mm -hmm. There's no reason you can't make a decision to go back to moving like that. Correct. You know, there's just no reason you can't do that. So and I think the more that you do that, especially if you have children at home, the more that you do that, the more likely it is that you're by show teaching them that just because mom and dad are adults mm -hmm. and they're doing all these other things, they're still taking care of themselves. Right. Um, I mean, my kids see me exercise all the time, especially now that it's, it's actually gotten nice outside, <laughs> like temperature wise. <laughs> and when I take my kids to Taekwondo now, um, there's another mom I've been talking to. And last week I got to class. I dropped my kids off. I was like, you have fun in class. I'm going to go take a walk because, right, I just otherwise sit there and watch them. And what's the purpose for me then? I could be doing something for myself. So she looked at me. She's like, I got tennis. She's like, can I walk with you? I was like, great. Come on. <laughs> there was a father on Arden's softball team and we'd get to a practice and the kids would get settled and he'd put on different shoes and just take off and run. Yeah. And that, that's it. He did it every time. He used the practice as his time. His exercise yeah, time. Yeah. He's like, exactly. I'm not at home. You know, I'm not doing other things. I, I'm not just going to sit here and stare at these kids practice in softball. So I'm going to go do this now. Right. Yeah. I mean, and unless you have to be an interactive part of your child's participation in a sport or whatnot, um, obviously it's important for them to see you there and paying attention and cheering them on and all of that kind of stuff. But if there are points at which clearly they don't even care until you pick them up, mm -hmm. then <laughs> go be busy yourself. There's a list here I found that I'm going to run through real quickly just because I can imagine people are like, ah, I don't want to go for a walk. So uh, <laughs> ride a bike, walk your dog, which I thought uh, we should like, you know, maybe your dog's mm -hmm. like, oh, the guy never takes me anywhere. Uh, <laughs> sk skipping rope. Yes. Please don't do that if you're on a high floor in an apartment building. Uh, frisbee, the gym, swimming. This is hokey. Host a dance party. <laughs> If you do that, please let me know. <laughs> uh, use this is akin to what uh, what Jenny was talking about earlier. Use the stairs instead of using an elevator. Um, carry out ho household chores, things you need to get done anyway. Just even moving around the house and bending over and reaching around the back of the toilet and like at yeah. least you're moving right. Um, yoga is brought up here again. That's something you could do through YouTube. This says attempt rock climbing. I'm not doing that. Uh, mm. go, go for a hike. Hula hoop, uh, join a sport. There, some parks have circuits already set up. Yes, like if you don't know what like, to do, you can. They're typically like called Vita courses. Essentially, they okay. have you walk a little bit and then you do like a pull up. They have you walk a little bit and you might do a couple sit ups on like a park bench or something like that. But they've got a visual of how to do the exercise, how many reps to maybe do, and then hey, proceed on down the path from here. Uh, this one's interesting. Uh, if you bowl three games, you'll walk an average of a half a mile. <gasps> Isn't that interesting? Really? I, who would know? Um, huh. I, I'll, I'll say one. I I used to love, like, photography. And then that love of photography, I kind of pointed at my children, and now I have way too many pictures of my kids. Um, but when you go out to take pictures, you wander around looking for things to take pictures of. It's another good yeah. way to keep your mind busy 
and not yeah. tell yourself, oh, I'm out here moving around because I got to get moving and, you know, all right. that stuff. Uh, and spin class at the end. But that sounds horrible. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I used to love my spin class. I, I don't belong to a gym anymore, but I I really loved my spin classes. They were yeah. a lot of fun. So what are we looking for out of exercise? Like, because this, I mean, obviously we're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about lifting weights. We're not talking about doing anything really intense. So what's the feedback I'm looking for from my body to tell me this is worthwhile and valuable for me? Right. So one big thing, as I would recommend for anybody starting something they haven't been doing, is make sure that you are okay to start it, right? Your doctor visit, make sure everything's fine. As long as that's the case, then out of exercise, you're looking for an increase in your heart rate above sitting down. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> right. So you mentioned dog walking before. Dog walking is fantastic, but if you take your dog for a half mile walk and every three steps is a sniff and pee and grab and chew on the stick, you're probably getting a little more movement than you might have been sitting at home, but you're really not getting like, like walk the dog, yeah. right? Yeah, that's an extensive <laughs> wandering around the kitchen with trees. Yeah. Yes, right. yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're looking at a, an increase in your heart rate. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be out of breath. In fact, some of the most beneficial for weight loss type of movement is honestly being able to carry on an easy conversation. Not like we're having now, but you should be a little out of breath, but not terribly out of breath that you can't actually get words out, okay. right? Mm -hmm. um, so thus the reason, bring a friend along. You can have a nice conversation about something. But yes, a bit of an increase in heart rate, um, a warmth if you're moving and we're talking about cardiovascular exercise here, you are going to warm up if you're getting enough movement in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up something from the podcast. Let me see if I can find it. Ooh. There was a guy on episode 713. His name's Adam. He had type 1 diabetes. Uh, the episode's called Rage Rocking because I thought that was funny. Because mm. I thought that was funny. Not because... <laughs> not it is because, funny. That's because not because it had a lot to do with anything. But he uh he lost weight uh rucking, which is walking with a backpack that's weighted. And apparently sure. Jennifer, apparently this is incredibly popular. So um if you're if you're a person who wants to go on a hike or you know, just go for a walk and add a little more to it. Apparently, rucking is a terrific way. It's worth Googling and looking at or listening to Adam's story in the episode because uh, his experience was, I remember being pretty like blown away by what he was able to accomplish. I wonder if rucking came from, you know, rucksack is actually the term for a military backpack. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. Somebody, Which, lo somebody looked at a bunch of guys who were, you know, overseas and they're like, those guys are all in great shape. <laughs> Yeah. What well, doing? and that's, yeah. I mean, that's essentially what they do is they go out and they, they hike with a, a lot of all of their stuff in their backpack yeah. and it's training. Yeah. They're carrying so. their life with them and they have to yeah. carry it. And apparently it's, apparently it's in, insanely beneficial. So, um, mm -hmm. and a thing that, uh, from his description and, and when I remember looking into it is something that does have easy entry for you. Like it's, you know, you just grab a backpack at home and put, 10 pounds in it and go for a walk. And then when well, it gets easy, add more, you know. And what comes up to me as a, another good suggestion um, for a parent who has a child that is of the size that you can put uh -huh. in one of those carrying or the right, carry your child. If you're going to go out and take a walk while pushing a stroller is also something to be said of extra, carrying that child on your person and walking adds more just like this idea of a weighted backpack yeah yeah this is, you know it's funny it just made me think of something i went to high school with a guy who's like a land management person now and he's one of those guys he's outside all the time he carries his gear with him i stop and think about that guy he's absolutely chiseled yeah he he's just he's got little ripply muscles on top of little ripply muscles he's outside 
He's moving. He's carrying things. I don't think he's setting up a, a gourmet meal uh, that, that has cheesecake at the end, probably. You, you know what I mean? Out right. in the field. So he's living right. that lifestyle he's getting. And I think that really is what we're talking about, right? Like there's there's a lifestyle that leads to an end. Just like just like mm-hmm. sitting around leads to an end. Moving around leads to an end. Um, yes. I, I did really, I loved your idea of like including someone else too. I mean, going all the way back to my story when we were kids, it's my aunt grabbed her daughter. And and I, I want to be clear, like, I did not grow up in a family full of people, like, exercising. Right. There were two exercises I saw done in front of me in that time. It was those walks and my cousin doing something that involved her going, I must, I must, I must increase must my improve. bust. And then, <laughs> so these are the only I- the only exercises I was ever witness to. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. And the oh second one did not work for her, if you're wondering. No, it w- it won't work. <laughs> Although it's funny that we're both in the same category of having, I totally remember that as well. Yeah. Um, there so was yes. this thing with a spring, right? It was, yes. And you were trying to make your, I, I, I don't want to be indelicate, you're trying to make your no. boobs bigger, but that's not how that works. <laughs> that's not how that works. Yeah. No, <laughs> so, it is not. <laughs> turns out you could have just had a little more milk as you were growing up and that might have done it. Uh, yeah. Get those. Get those. So, but. Ahead, but I'm yeah, sorry. definitely in involving someone else in your plan keeps you motivated because again, you may be even checking in with them, mm-hmm. right? And if you wanted to go a little bit deeper, there are there are even, you know, some some tracking apps, things like many of the tracking devices, the tracking watches and those kinds of things, they've got motivational things on them that will even tell you, "Hey, you know, like my watch, it tells me, hey, get up. You've got 250 steps to get in yet this hour. Like you've clearly been sitting on your bottom. So yeah. get up and move some, right? I'll say too, like for a lot of you, I mean, you might have a little natural anxiety to begin with. Point it at something valuable. It, yes. You know, like if that's a great point. If that app is like, look, walk this many steps, uh, or a lot of you whose personalities are going to go, okay, well, I need to do this now. So sometimes yes. just asking it of yourself is going to make it happen because it's kind of how you're wired. You could be doing right. that with with things that are not beneficial in your life and not realizing it. Like, I, it's interesting how we can turn things into tasks. Yes. You, do you know what I mean? And And some of them are not always good, but they become repetitive and you do them anyway. Right. Okay. Well, I, I love the way you just said it now, like involve someone else in your plan. And I thought... If you're robbing a bank, don't involve anybody. <laughs> but, if, but if you're exercising, tell people. <laughs> tell people. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, they yeah. say that more than two people can't keep a secret. So <laughs> eventually someone's going to snitch. <laughs> but in this situation, that'd be a great thing. That all would be right, a good right. thing. Yeah, what are we? Exactly. Are we not saying anything that we should be here? Oh, I know. I'm trying to think. Um Well, I think it goes along with involve someone else. If you are the type of person who really needs some direction, and if you have the means, it may not be a bad idea with motivation in the picture to just call a gym and see what it would be like to get a month's worth of a trainer, Mm -hmm. right? Somebody who can give you a starting place where you are and give you an idea of how to progress out of that, even if you're not going to stick with them longer than a month. You've got an idea now. You've got a base to mm-hmm. continue to build on. And it may very well be money well spent. Yeah. Also, if you're looking for another reason to do that, it's a great place to meet people too. It is. You know, in a in a world where it's hard to meet other people. We were talking about this somewhere the other day. Um, it's hard to date. It's hard to like it's hard to even it's hard to meet people. You're working. Right. You, you know, some of us are working in our homes. Um, there are days I just go out to go out. Because yes. I'm like, I got to leave here now. <laughs> you know, right. middle of the day yesterday, my mom was asking for something. I was like, I'll go to the store and see. And she, my brother's like, you don't live here. I'm like, I'll mail it to her. I just got to get out of the house. <laughs> so you know, I, I need out. to see other people in real person. Some fresh air. I got in my car. I drove. I walked around a little bit. I was like, thank you. know, I needed to get yeah. away. And you don't, re- it just becomes, I, I don't know, like the, the whole COVID lockdown it really sh- shone a light on that for me that mm-hmm. if I'm not careful, I could do this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever again and never break this cycle whatsoever. It just, yeah. you know, it, it's there's always work to do. 
There's always something to do around the house. Like I could, you know, could easily become a shut in. No problem. Right. You know, don't be a hermit. No. Uh, yeah. Hermit's hermits is okay, but not like a regular hermit. <laughs> Find your that? dog and you've got a dog. Yeah. Find right. your dog. Take the dog to the dog park. You will see people there. Oh, I got a great walk the other day because my dog just wandered away. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to my wife at the back door and we're having this conversation about something. And I turned around. And I was like, where, where's, where's the dog? <laughs> where, where's oh. the dog? So now I'm like, oh, I know which way he likes to go. I'm walking in that direction. Also, I stopped to get a sweatshirt because I'm delicate and it was chilly. So I, <laughs> I think Don't say got, you're delicate, Scott. That's, you're not delicate. He got a little distance on me because I was like, I'm not going out without a sweatshirt. <laughs> so like, uh, and then he's just five doors down standing in someone's backyard. And he's, he's so old. And I was like, Indy, what are you doing, buddy? And he looked up. He goes, oh, hey. He looked at me like, I'm lost. <laughs> lost. Yeah. I don't I don't smell right anymore. So yeah. I don't know exactly which way to sniff back to where I'm really supposed to be. He looked at me like I was standing here waiting for you to come find me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he looked at me. He's like, ah. and then he starts like he forgets he's old. He starts to run. And then he's like, oh, can we walk? And he, he looks at me like, let's let's not go too fast. And I'm like, Can you pick me up, in fact? He's too big for that. But it, oh. I hope that doesn't come to that. Oh, gosh. Anyway, oh. Jennifer, I really appreciate you doing this very much. Of course. Yes. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. If you're enjoying the Type 2 Pro Tip series, please share it with someone else who you think might also enjoy it. Let me thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode of the podcast and remind you that if you go to betterhelp.com forward slash juicebox, you will save 10% off your first month of therapy. And don't forget that full line of contour meters at contournext.com forward slash juice box. They are really accurate and very worth checking out. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Hey guys, if you're looking for community around your diabetes, check out the private Facebook group for the juice box podcast. There's links in the show notes of your audio player. And if you'd like to hire Jenny, she works at integrateddiabetes.com. Just head over there and ask for Jenny.